Uh, my name is Liam Murphy, and today I'd like to discuss our mapping the new normal. So what I want to do is take you through who we are and what we do, and uh, then show you how some of our services may be able to benefit people um, as we navigate our way through the murky waters that are post-COVID scenario environments. So um, now we are Tier 3D, founded by myself and Jeff Hunt. Um, between the two of us, we were working in the industry for over 40, in 40 years. Uh, we'd like to think of ourselves as a leading uh, uh, company in consultancy, and we'd like to be dependable and trustworthy and stand out from more traditional firms by being more personable and presentable. We work throughout Ireland and the UK, and we've worked across Europe and the Middle East and in USA and in Australia in the past, so we've gotten around a little bit. Um, now, what we do are provide a range of services relating to land surveying and uh, engineering surveying. They are laser scanning and building information modeling, measured building surveys, topographical surveys, aerial surveys. We work in conservation and heritage and work with engineers and on engineering sites, uh, surveying services for those for our structural monitoring. We also do legal mapping and boundary surveys. We do visualization and uh, work with visual, uh, virtual reality environments and create and collect data from for augmented reality. And we also provide underground utilities to section. So information gathering pertaining to the geospatial environment in an accurate and precise fashion is kind of what we're about. Um, we'll run you quickly through some of the other services and bits and pieces before we get down to that, the, the nuts and bolts. So using our uh, fixed wing and multi-rotor drones, we can provide orthorectified imagery. That's fresh, up-to-date, uh, Google Earth style imagery of a site or environment under investigation. Um, that can be turned into digital surface models and digital terrain models, known as DTMs and DSMs, that provide an accurate 3D model of the topography of a site that uh, might be being studied. From those surface models, we can examine them and develop useful information, such as volume surveys, if you're working on a quarry, and we can look at a whole gamut of different things having that data. From the imagery that we correct, that we collect, we can create um, 3D models. And those 3D models are accurate and precise and can be analyzed in numerous different ways. So, bear with me now, my slide just doesn't want to advance. There we are. And from the previous slides, you would have seen quite large areas. Now we also work on uh, close up features. Let me just go back to that slide. Sorry, guys, my button is missing. There we go. So, for some of the uh, close range photography and scanning that we do, we can um, accurately model. Uh, detailed features like monuments or uh, built heritage and uh, architectural conservation. We also provide legal mapping. Um, we do this by taking the land registry maps and the ordnance survey maps and uh, examining them in relation to a site that may be up for conveyancing. Um, and in that legal mapping, we can provide land registry compliant maps for first registrations. Uh, boundary identification and verification. We work with subdivisions. If you're having a site or piece of property divided or selling on a part of it or splitting it within a family. We can also provide net internal area and gross internal area, area calculations for the likes of lease agreements. Um, we will sign declarations of identity for your solicitor if needs be. And we will generate conveyancing maps for land swaps and land transfers, etc. So the information we collect generally goes to form uh, 2D and 3D drawings of one format or the other. 
Uh, those will include site plans, floor plans, sections, elevations, etc. All useful to architects and engineers when uh, designing and looking at layouts for sites. Some of that data is formed from uh, point clouds that are gathered from laser scanners and from our UAVs. And they can be um, quite detailed and intense and contain a massive amount of very valuable information looking at um, uh, in, in design or whatever. Now, the point clouds can then be used to further model into building information models, which uh, are nowadays used massively throughout architectural practices and structural and civil engineering practices also. And uh, they can go from very simple models um, to uh, way more complex down to the nuts and bolts and the scheduling of uh, every element within a building. And they're used extensively through the lifespan of any building maintenance project or facilities project, constantly added to and updated by um, the people on site. So <clears throat> one of the focus I'm gonna have today is on precise measured building surveys. Traditionally, measured building surveys were taped up um, and, and sketched on site. Um, and those measurements are fine. And they're absolutely well and good when you're dealing with a single building or a small house or a single room rather. So, but your measured building survey should be an accurate representation of the building, showing all the structural and architectural features with the distances and angles precise and accurate and, uh, and repeatable as well. So we use laser scanners and total stations to gather the data to generate our precise measured building surveys. The advantage being that laser scanners capture millions and millions of points in a very short space of time. The scanner uses a spinning laser to record angles and distances, and the points form a cloud, um, a cloud of accurate survey me measurements, which can then be accurate, accurately modeled into floor plans, elevation sections, or building models, what have you. Now, why we use laser scanners? And one of the, some of the advantages of using laser scanners is to reduce the health and safety risk on hazardous areas. So they're used extensively within petrochemicals, uh, within nuclear power stations. They're used on mines and quarries where it wouldn't be at all practical to get somebody close to the object that's being measured. Um, in a more normal environment, one of the measurements, uh, benefits of them is that there is reduced contact to the environment that you're working in. So there's no physical contact with objects as all the measurements are gathered via a reflectorless laser. And millions and millions of these measurements are gathered in a very short space of time. So that leaves the data very highly detailed. There's a high level of data capture which often means that there's no necessity to return to site. And the data has it, has, is highly valuable for retrofitting and for new build. Um, when we go into site and we do a scan, we've essentially captured the entirety of the, the viewpoint from where the scanner is set up. Um, and that level of detail that's acquired uh, can be down to the objects on a desk in a room. So all the assets, furniture, uh, monitors, all the fittings from an office, all, all the fit out in a, a kitchen or a shop, um, their spatial position, their orientation and their layout are captured readily. Um, generally we'll extract the necessary amount of information to let the project carry forward. But the value in the data is that the extensive data capture is there at a later state in a project so that if you require extra measurement, there's no need to return to the site. The scan data can be brought up and new measurements that are required to advance the project can be pulled from the data readily. Now, where we use laser scanners, it's almost everywhere, but I mean, in pre-construction, 
prior to design or retrofit of buildings, sites and developments. Um, we apply, we take the scanners onto the site and model and capture the entirety of the reality in the area. They're used extensively for the creation of building information models where there's an exi existing building. They're used in virtual design and construction for the same methods. They're used for the comparison of design, um, of a build to a design, and for class protection within that design. So from the scanning then we can extract the usual more traditional projects which are your floor plans, your elevations, your sections and they are precise and accurate and can be dimensioned to millimeters and those measurements are repeatable and that, that's a key point that when you go back in and remeasure you're getting the same results all the time. So they form the basis for reliable and informed design and again they can go from the simple two-dimensional floor plan to uh, more incredibly detailed models. Now, pushing on to what um, you're kind of trying to get at here today. The uh, NSCI have produced a couple of documents in uh, response to the, the current pandemic. You probably have seen them. There are the Workplace Protection and Improvement Guide and the Retail Protection and Improvement Guide. They're intended to consolidate practical guidance that's available right now uh, on how to manage business continuity during the COVID-19 pandemic. They attempt to address the risks to both workers and the public to assist businesses to implement the mandatory return to work safety protocol for employers and workers. And this applies to every workplace in the country and specific sectors will have to introduce additional safeguards. So depending on the environment that you're working in, the business that you run, um, there will be different things that you will have to do to make a safe workspace for everybody. And I know we've all been through this over the years, over the, the past weeks rather. Um, and there's a lot of information out there and we're, I think we're getting really on the ball with it. Now, the return to work safety protocol is published by the government um, and it is a specific national protocol for employees and workers. So some of the things that it requires and particularly if you reference the document and you go to section 4c it uh, pertains to physical distancing. Um, sorry about my slide coming up, uh, coming up backwards here guys, just that this one's not laid out well. So where in section 4c um, some of the things that are described are where office work is essential free office capacity must be used as much as is reasonably practical um, and work should be organized in such a way that multiple occupancy of offices and premises is to be avoided or physical distances are to be maintained um, so work areas should be reorganized and rearranged and things like one-way systems for access and egress should be put into place where it is practical. So this is where our accurate measured building survey comes into play, um, particularly with people uh, um, and business owners that have larger, more complex areas and that may need to really have a good look at them and see how they can lay out their uh, lay out their environment to get people back uh, in, into their workspace. Because not all of us have, like myself, a space at home where we can work successfully, uh, quietly and peacefully. I know my uh, two-year-old daughter loves to see daddy home, but uh, it's not often the uh, it's not often the best environment to get work done. Um, an accurate building survey in some cases will allow business owners and managers to make an informed decision using reliable information and using data that isn't single purpose. It's reusable. Your building is captured or your workspace is captured or the environment that you're looking at is captured in such detail that 
it's really, really useful down the line if you're uh, further planning to do anything with, with your building or workspace. So the 3D laser scan environments can be practically anywhere. Here we have um, a canteen from a large office. This is the in, inside of a pub. And uh, here's a lecture hall from, uh, from school that we would have recently surveyed. So what we can do is using the 3D laser scan data that we've captured, uh, examine it, analyze your floor space layout, particularly desks or canteen spaces. Or um, This could be on a, on a production line. It could be within, uh, within a warehouse. It doesn't have to be just desks. So we can look at the objects where people are typically occupy their time or spend their day or have to work from and uh, quite easily look at a rearrangement of the desks, look at a rearrangement of where people are positioned within their environment and help people to plan out how to redesign that space um, so that they can provide a safer, safer environment. So in order for us to continue work and carry on, what we've done is complied with some of the CIF uh, recommendations and guidelines. Um, we've carried out their online induction and got certification in uh, the standard operating procedure from the CIF and uh, some of us here have had to become uh, C19 compliance officers. So we're doing our best to stay up to date and uh, trying to get ahead of what's happening at the moment in order to facilitate our customers and clients um, and bring in the service that we provide and uh, basically trying to do a better job. So you might see some of your own names up there depending on who's uh, watching, but uh, just a list of our current and previous clients. And uh, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me today. I know it was short, I hope it was sweet. And um, if you need inf any information, give us a call at Tier 3D Surveys, visit www.tier3g.ie and we would be delighted to take your call and have a discussion about anything you need measured. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Liam. Uh, and, uh, just to give anybody an opportunity there, if there's any uh, questions anybody wants to pose. I know it's quite a, there's a, a lot of work in planning this at the moment. And uh, I know from speaking to the government, they're still, you know, trying to get businesses uh, in line with the back to work safety protocol and ready for then the phased opening. And that's so important. Um, and, uh, you know, there's so many different uh, ways that people need to look at it. And, uh, and there's, there's different interpretations, and well, not interpretations, but I find the documentation is is changing and evolving as you know we, we accept what's happening, get newer information, and uh, basically really look at how we how we get past this and get through it. Yeah. You know, so uh, we are trying to move and evolve with the current situation. Everybody's just rolling with the punches at the moment I think Brian. I know and that's all you can do and uh, kind of as the new information comes out but um, it is so important to be having a look at you know the layouts and that and to see what way you can make changes um, and that as well but if anybody has any comments or questions the webinar from today it will be live on the Chamber website uh, I normally say within 24 hours so if you go onto the Chamber website you can play back any of our webinars there uh, will be available if you've got any questions at all even afterwards you can get in touch with Liam at Tier 3D Surveys um, and we look forward to seeing you at uh, our next upcoming webinar which is this Thursday where we're going to launch an e-commerce website in 20 minutes not a challenge I'm carrying on myself. Uh, luckily, I've got Con from Black Knight Solutions who's dealing with that one for me. So for me in the chamber, thank you very much to Liam. Thank you to everybody who took the time to join us this afternoon. Yeah. And keep Absolutely. safe. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.